Welcome back, friends of the shop. I was hoping to be out in the forest today getting started on our log mortise and tenons, but it's raining and it's forecasted to rain all week. So I'm a little tired after uh, I stayed up a little too late watching the elections and uh, I'm not going to be 100% today. So all of the, uh, the timber stuff came in today. Some fascinating tools I'll share with you. Take a look at this. Isn't that beautiful? That is the tenon tool right there. It's like a giant pencil sharpener, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, this is not a product endorsement. I, I paid full retail for this. I looked around online. It seems a lot of guys really like this, and it was uh, made from an all-USA company up in the, uh, where is it? Vermont, is it? Green, Wisconsin? I don't know. We'll find out. Nice folks, though. Okay, so this is the tool right here. So there'll be a little setup. Uh, it comes with some blades and shims, which you can see right here. There's your blades and shims. And if we open that up, caution sharp, it says. I'll bet they are. I think I had one of those staples out there. There they are. So there are the blades, and these are, you can service these yourself. Right there, there's two of them. I would have liked to have seen in the packaging, just as a little data point here, uh, to protect these blades a little better, maybe even wrap them up in uh, a brown paper. Uh, but they're bouncing around in there with all those screws, and uh, you know, it's a shame to damage a nice keen edge like that. Shim there to, if you want to be less aggressive in the cut, is what it says. So we'll set that up here. Here is the, um, the tenon tool right there, which is just an inch and a half self-feeding auger right there you can see self-feeding auger hex shank that's it yeah i don't know it looks like it's usa made it looks like a quality item uh, we will see sometimes those self-feeders are a little bit uh, aggressive uh, they get, you get a lot of tear out on the other side but uh, we'll see about that so now to drive these big tools and you don't imagine driving this Great big pencil sharpener deal here. You need a pretty good sized drill. And the folks over at uh, Lumberjack recommended this one specifically. So you Milwaukee guys are gonna be happy here. Milwaukee f tool guys are the biggest fanboys, and rightfully so. I think the more that I use them, I think the more I like them. You know, I, I have, I'm a little bitter towards Milwaukee. Um, and I was thinking, you know, guys are always recommending them. And I asked myself, why don't I buy them? And I had to do a little self-reflection. I was like, well, I'm bitter towards them. And I asked myself, why are you bitter towards them? Well, Milwaukee really, growing up, when I was doing excavating just out of high school, and we used Milwaukee sawzalls and, and some of their tools, the quality of those things, and now this would have been like in the 80s, was unprecedented. I mean, it was, it was just understood. You grabbed a Milwaukee, you know, that was the best of the best if you were going to buy tools. And then they kind of cheaped out, you know, and I, what, what burned me on them, I think, is when I had my Jeep part business, what we used to, to section all the tubs and, and the bodies and all, you know, cut all those into quarters was, was Sawzalls, and that seemed to be the best. And I knew growing up, of course, the Milwaukee stuff was the best. And I started buying their Milwaukee Sawzalls, and this must have been right at the time where they started making stuff in China and cutting corners, and I don't know all the details, but they never did lower the price, right? They lowered the quality, but the price remained the same. So you would invest in this quality tool hoping that this was going to be one that would really treat you well. Well, what I saw is that the thing started, they just didn't hold up. They just would, after, and they were still not that old and parts were breaking on the inside and you know we used them really hard. I ended up switching to DeWalt and they lasted twice as long. So that always soured me on Milwaukee. I just, it's so disappointing to see a company that is so great and then some, who knows what, you know, some corporate, takeover group comes in and buys them and, and milks everything they milks everything they can out of the good name that's been built over decades by hardworking engineers and tradesmen right so that I guess that's why I, maybe I just need to get over that little confirmation bias I'm always looking you know for excuses to hate on Milwaukee here's the bevel tool so what this is for so after we cut let's see yeah after we cut that hole with the uh, mortise tool, tenon tool then this will go in there and we can put a nice bevel in there so that those tenons will fit in nice and tight. You know, kind of imagine, you know, this whole thing going on there. Uh, and that's it. So the only other thing, I'm not going to get into the sharpening. You know, I, of course, I love to buy tools that have, um, you can service yourself. It's always nice. So they, they, they offered a sharpening jig uh, that we can sharpen our own blades. So we're not going to get into that, the, to that today. 
uh, but we'll save that for the future when, when that time comes. Plus I ordered two sets of blades. Last is this guy, it's three pieces. It's, it's a clamp to hold those logs when you're putting those uh, tenons on. Because you can imagine, you know, when you look at it, when they make a drill with a, a, a 16 inch offset handle on there, you know, that tells you something, right? That, that probably has some torque, <laughs> some torque to it. So you can imagine how hard it's gonna be holding that log. It's not something you can step on on the ground. So this they recommend is a, uh, there's a brochure, is a uh, clamping system right there that these things turn into. So we'll have to figure out some way to mount this. I was wondering maybe we could, I want to kind of mount it permanently because we have a whole bunch of fence posts to do, right? So I thought, you know, maybe we get a six by six and bury it in the ground like three, four feet really deep and anchor that and, and bolt this thing to it so we, we could clamp those down and work at it. I don't know. Maybe we could even hook it to the uh, tractor bucket or the wood splitter permanently. So I'll think about that here, but we'll, we'll do that together when that time comes. Uh, I'll close with this. Um, this is uh, added value right here. There's a couple companies that come to mind uh, that give you something that is an added value, right? That you're not expecting when you... I'm having a nice experience here, right? Because everything is really nicely made. The packaging is very nice. And then I get this out and it's, it's a set of plans, really well written plans with great pictures and difficulty ratings and such for all sorts of projects. So from first time projects, you can make a, a nice little three-legged stool here. You guys can see that right there. Or that's not, I don't know what that is. What is that? An arbor. Um, footboard for a bed, there's uh, Adirondack chairs, all sorts of things and they have full cut sheets and they give you everything that you need uh, to do it so you can get a whole materials list. That's really nice and it's really well written and it has, it's full of useful things. There's like a coat rack and a gun hook or a, a coat hook and a gun rack and, and all that sort of thing so that's nice. Grand Forest Brooks does that as well. It's hard to buy those things, you know, they're expensive, some, you know, $170 or so for an axe and you get it and of course, you know, you're really enjoying it and then that added benefit of that nice little axe book that they give you with all the history of the company and information, you know, how to, different ways to split logs and how to stack firewood, you know, it's just a nice little book. I like that added value and I definitely got that feeling um, from this as well. So, yeah, cool. I thought that I'd share that with you while it's raining. I'm going to put this all together. We're probably running a little bit long now. I'll set, set up all the, the blades and all that, and then we'll do a short video. Uh, I'll go down. I've got some nice aspen down there, and we'll cut those mortises and tenons and uh, start practicing a little bit and kind of get that figured out. And we'll do that here uh, together this afternoon. All right. Well, thanks for watching. May God bless you guys. Please keep my family in your prayers, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.